What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the A Show with the Kings Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am Justin here with Meals. What's going on, Meals? Hey, man. Orange and blue skies, baby. That's all I got to say. Oh, uh, man. What a, what a, what a, um, what a win last night, huh? What a melee. <laughs> that never happens to us. <laughs> yeah. What a, that, that is crazy. I said, wow. Like, these guys are really getting it done. Well, what, 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 what's your ceiling? I know you always have a, you know, Every, every Eastern conference finals and then it ends there it for sure okay. ends there okay i'm you're like re- you're realistic yeah i'm 30 percent sure i'm th- i'm like 40 percent sure it'll end next round it could end next round depending on who we face um but i'm re- i'm i'm definitely sure we're not getting past the easter it'll be wild if we did Right. Um, but I'm almost sure we're not getting past the Eastern Conference Finals unless someone from the Celtics gets injured. Um, but hey, we're here, man. Listen, it's a it's a great day. I feel good. I would, you know, Knicks are making me feel better about being unemployed. So it's a it's a great it's a great day. It's a great day. Um, I got three stuff for you. Three things. Three questions. Yeah. Okay. Off top. Mm-hmm. Um, first question is what is TikTok trying to sell you currently? Uh everything. I'll put your loco. Um <laughs> TikTok shop stuff. Is the TikTok shop really like that that new hotness? It is. My niece uh has been using it actually. She okay. bought so she bought quite a bit of stuff from TikTok shop. I'm not actually sure where it is because it takes so long to come. Um but she bought that. I think she bought hair. I think she bought it. So, a mad things she bought a, quite a bit from tiktok shop so it's definitely like the new hotness to be honest with you like they've been trying to sell me like um like weight loss shirts <laughs> like the shirts that are um yeah yeah the shirts that have the, the 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 sauna shirts no the sauna t-shirts so it's these workout shirts that have this like material on the it's been insulated with to help you sweat more and blah blah blah. So I've been getting that. I've been getting dude wipes. Um I've been getting I blame WWE for that. Um mad shit, bro. But apparently TikTok shop is yeah. You might have to start next set of t shirts might be on TikTok shop to be real with you. Yeah. Uh hey, it, it could be. And it'll should like here's the thing. I've seen people say that they're not only getting that, they're getting like political ads. I haven't gotten any political ads. And now that I've said it, I'm probably gonna they, my phone hears me. It's probably gonna yeah. have me. Mine is right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, it 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 really is like I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's giving Congress and the and you know the the Senate and all that stuff. Like you know, they just passed that bill saying that, that mm-hmm. you know that that they, they, they got to sell it or it's gonna be banned. Like they're giving them more ammo because this is just crazy algorithm <laughs> <sighs> <We're> finagling. It, <laughs> it is. It really is like. The algorithm is so. I wish, I don't know. We're in a weird to fucking technology time. But them trying to get rid of TikTok is like trying to silence the youth them, and I'm not for it. I'm not for it at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I am. When I'm on, it's like they're selling me like a bunch of like house stuff, but like from like vendors that are primarily on TikTok. Like that is the that is the thing. So that's what I've been saying. Hey man, I'm gonna, I might try something out. I might get some from TikTok Shop. Get matter? what? I don't know, but the shit it's got. This is like the weirdest. It's like the weirdest thrift store. <laughs> like that you. They're not selling me nothing like feasible or plausible. I think that is the issue with. The yeah, TikTok, is that I, I'm getting. Nothing. You want a Walkman? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> you want some rugs. I got sold. I, I got served rugs the other day, but mostly it's been like food stuff, like. You want a Naruto fucking um uh a, a Naruto what's the shit that we put on our heads? Not do rag. The the little bandana bonnet. Thing. Bonnet. You want a Naruto bonnet? No. Hey, <laughs> hey, shout out shout out to Hypeland, man. A brand that I never really like gave a lot of respect to, right? I feel you. Um <laughs> they dropped two really cool um two really cool um Capsules. collabs yeah, yeah, yeah that i've that i've that i've perused in and, I, and i'm really kind of like trying to get off of graphic tees lately but I, I the, feel gundam, you. the gundam shit was hard i got mine the other day um just got sent to me the other day 
And the Street Fighter collab was uh, is actually really good. I haven't been able to to peruse that right now because I'm between addresses, so I'm gonna cop I that. Got the, I got the Blanca shirt. That's hard. And I've been yeah, I've been trying to stay away from <laughs> graphic tees. Like I'm like, bro, I can't. I'm getting really up there, but no, it's pretty good. Like it's a good collaboration. It's a, a good just a capsule collection and stuff. Their stuff has been way better than it was before. The I blend to me are heavy. The tees are actually really good. The Gundam tees that I got were actually like I wore my. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All their tees are heavy. Yeah, all their tees are heavy. But before it used to be like just thin. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, it just used to be like whatever commercial use free character on a t-shirt with the Hypeland logo over it. And I'm like, people buying this bullshit? Yeah. Um, but now it's a little bit more involved. It looks like they got someone, you know, it looks like they're a little bit more involved with the stuff they do. Like they actually want to be recognized for being like an actual solid brand instead of yeah. just like an anime brand. Um, but it's, it's, it's going really, really well. All right, so a second question I got for you. Okay. Have you ever listened to a Taylor Swift album? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just cut it off. How right. is it possible? 2.3 million in the first week, and we've never... I've, I listened to... I think I listened to part of... I've listened to... I don't think I've actually sat through a Taylor Swift album, but probably the most songs I've ever heard from a Taylor Swift album was probably from her Red album. Which released at the same time as Kendrick Lamar. It was like Kendrick and Taylor, you know, blah, blah, which is now mad relevant. Um, but yeah, listen, man, this is just the thing. It's like a thing that I feel like black people don't understand, but we understand she's like moving units. <laughs> I-, I get it. I mean, <laughs> no, whenever whenever black people are, are seemingly on the up and up they just try and drag us back down again they they bring out a taylor swift album <laughs> yeah <they're just> like, <laughs> whenever we up then they want to bring us down again bro that, that's really just what it is man that's hey really man cool. she wants to exist in the 1830s except without the racism i was like this is the stuff that <laughs> i think like, this is the song the, the album of the year four times in a row beat michael jackson and beyonce multiple times um you always got to have that one kind of like artist too because they they gotta re, they gotta reclaim they gotta reclaim this shit somehow yo even leanne Rhymes. do you remember leanne rhymes yeah like i don't feel like she had as much of a grip as like taylor like taylor swift is just but i think it's because of the lack of like we don't really have a lot of artists bro you know what i mean mm. Like, That's very true. We don't have a lot of artists no more, bro. Like it's like SZA, Beyonce. Yeah, like what? Taylor. Where's, our, where's our Whitney Houston at, bro? It's, it's SZA. No, <laughs> no. Shut the hell up, <laughs> please! Almost stop this fucking <laughs> fucking. Listen, singing isn't applauded anymore. That's why it'll never be another Whitney Houston. The the actual art of like being knowing how to sing is not applauded anymore at all. Like and that's why that's why most artists can get away with it. It's like that new Camila Cabello's single um I which like it. I love right. I actually do like the song. I would love it if she wasn't singing the song. <laughs> Cuz it just feels so try hard. The and then Car- I was doing the dance. All <laughs> like she's not a dancer. She's not a <laughs> it girl. Like what is she doing? Um, and then Cardi's verse is just. <laughs> I, I want to see the closed caption for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that Lana Del Rey knew it at Coachella. I, I saw a clip of that the other day. I haven't watched oh. anything at all. Tyler's set. Good. Amazing. I, I didn't watch the first week set, but the second week's the second week set was pretty good. And mm-hmm. then I've heard great things about the Doja Cat set that I haven't watched. I've only seen the clips on TikTok, which just showed me her performing the song called Wet Pussy. So what a controversial song title. I, I, I she put out the the little deluxe thing to her album. I was like, you know what I'm feeling these. I actually listened to it and I was like, wow, these is this is pretty good. Yeah. Like she's, you know, I didn't even listen to low key. I haven't re- listened to the original album, but I was like seven songs of her rapping. I could do this. But does the, did that the her latest album get like a lot of burn? Like the uh, last one did though. Like I feel like no, 
with it. Nah, this is, I mean, it got a number one single. Um, hey. that will not be played What's in like. What does that mean anymore? What does that know. mean? Nothing. If it's more than one week, I get it. If it's also not the week that your album comes out, I also get it. Um, but yeah, I shit. Yeah. I don't know. What's the third question? What's the third question? Um, do you think one day we'll get to the point where we can use AI to get an actual WWE guest on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've been getting hated on lately. I I'm 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 kind of weirded out about that too. It's a I feel here's how I feel about the situation. Mm-hmm. And I love my partner at WWE. Um, but I, also feel, I love saying our partners at the WWE. Our partners. <laughs> um, so we, one, we don't do the press junket thing. No, nor do they give them really guess anyway. Yeah. WWE press is literally for they respect like if they're giving you to, at this point now they're like yo, we're not giving press a not like press to anybody, but like interviews and stuff like that. They're not giving that to anybody, but they will invite a bunch of publications out if they're doing pay-per-views. And now they only do it in the States about five times a year. <laughs> yeah. It's so like you got to become like a travel journalist. Essentially. Yeah. So we don't really do that. Um, I guess we could, but yeah, we, we don't could. really do that. Um, we really just want the guests to have a great conversation on the show. I think it's a, and I've been rethinking. I'm like, man, I really want like, I really want to have like a great guest on the show um, to have a good conversation with, but yeah, it's been, but who knows? We might be able to use AI. Just get Roman on it. You know, you a Roman will. I mean, if you're not Conan O'Brien, he's not showing up. So, <laughs> I think we got Bianca Belair right before the cutoff of like, all right, she's not doing this shit no more. <laughs> uh, what she? Um, yeah, it was right before SummerSlam twenty two. That was when it kind of turned up for her. As much as people want to deny that 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 turned her up, it was right then. Right yeah, then. yeah. I think it. I think we got it right at the cutoff. Um, and positive thinking. Positive thinking. We'll be positive. I- I don't think we'll need AI. No. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. But, you know, people have been, I mean, I'm just, at this point, it's definitely consider if Drake's using AI, fucking, if Drake's using voice, voice shits, I mean, might as well get in on the. It's voice modulator. We could probably get a voice modulator. It's just that we, but you know what? A plus is our human voice modulator. He knows. This is that. true. This is true. I have that already. I know, right? Shout out to A plus. Shout out to A plus, man. Shout out to A plus. Who's gonna um WWE shows uh this weekend? They're gonna be in this part of the town. So he's he's a if he goes, you'll you can be a draft correspondent. Payola plus, Payola plus. Just saying. (laughs) Uh, All right, you should probably get into stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Um. I uh, I mean I guess should we just go to, to to bummer news or let's go to bummer news. Let's start off yeah, let's start off the the so, news. WWE, That's definitely a bummer. WWE had releases over the past and they've been staggered. Do, what what do you think the strategy is behind that? Um hmm. not to That's actually a good fucking It's been no one really I would hate if I was really staggered, but it has happened. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure. I feel like they're not fully sure of like who they all want to release. You know, yeah, it, it seems that that it is <clears throat> in a way where in the past these releases have always seemed very haphazard and confusing. Oh, also they have a new. They fired the guy that who's. <laughs> Who's negotiating all these things? Yeah. Um, most recently, so that could also be part of an issue of like this kind of like um, transitioning and kind of like figuring out and like kind of like maybe someone new in this position is really just trying to figure out this all at the same time. That's why I'm just using my brain. 
Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, I, I think that, like, I think that in the past, like I said, like, these have been really confusing, right? Like, there's been, like, why them? Why now? Sometimes they would be releasing people that were that we just saw on TV the night before, right? These releases have honestly seemed like um, it's just people that they didn't have anything for in general. And then, and then, and in in that sense had not been on TV as well. So we're going to go down the list um, and like, be clear, like draft is coming up. There's probably going to be a bunch of call-ups. We're going to talk about the draft um, in, in, you know, a lot of uh, detail in, in a couple of minutes here. But first up, we had Jinder Mahal, who was kind of like the first of the, of the, the salvo of them during Friday, during SmackDown, when this was happening, Jinder Mahal says he quit. Do you believe this? No, but it, it felt like, you know, fuck these guys. That's what it felt like. It felt like when I'm let go, I'm like, I mean, fuck these guys. Because, I mean, I don't know. That's what it felt like. What he'll say in person, I feel like he's a very strong, smart guy who might say the right things. But if I were him, I would be upset. But also... I'm me, <laughs> and <laughs> I've watched Jinder Mahal, so I'm kind of, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird, what do you, this is Jinder Mahal's second run in WWE, Um, clearly better than the first, but never, even when he was rehired in like, God, it had to be 2014, 2015, um, he was there a <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying one his working style felt like the industry passed him a buy so fucking long ago he he was he's not a dynamic worker like at all <laughs> like not even a little bit <laughs> i think at best really like really seemed like he was someone that was really close to a lot of guys there like like yeah. really good personality hire. it seems like a, a nice guy i think that ultimately like I mean, just this year, you had people that were ready to fucking riot that he was getting a World Heavyweight Championship shot earlier this right. year. Right. Yeah. Like, it, like, like, people were very upset about that. But again, he, it did make moves. They they were able to kind of maximize on whatever limitedness that you said that he had. They were able to capitalize that into something that got them ratings at one point. Right. 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 The only issue is you can't keep doing that. You know what I mean? Like, he, like he, you would have ultimately had to have done something with him. And I don't think they had anything to do or anything for him to do or the other two people that he was connected to, which were Veer and Sangha, um, who were on NXT for, for a while, or at least Sangha was. And I like Sangha on NXT. I thought he was a really cool character. Then they wiped that all away. And then he just came up as in this year. And, you know, I thought Sangha and Veer having that, like, you know, Sangha's trying to be peaceful and Veer is like, no, you got to be a, you got to be a savage. I really liked that storyline. I thought there was something there. And I think of the two, I thought Sangha was like, really really dope um but they just had nothing for them and and i know that <clears throat> i think all three or veer and sangha both said like wwe as a fear of of pushing indian talent and you know they don't know how to push indian talent they're 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 reluctant to do so i, I go ahead i am sure. like <sighs> okay let me just it, be clear okay let me just be clear right this, this is not indicative of like their talents I just think that there are like, if they were to find the Indian Oscar, or the Indian right. Kyrie Sane, or the Indian Braun Breaker, he would be <laughs> still there today. Right. I don't think that those three guys were exactly that, and I don't think that it boils down to that. Like, I, I don't think that they were missing something with these three guys. No, I don't think so either. I can see it from their vantage point of like when you look for that. Um when you look for what am I going to say what we look for representation with kind of Indian um, WWE superstars, you never really see it there. And Jin, to be honest, Jinder Mahal for all rights and purposes, other than the great Kali is the most successful Indian superstar that's ever been in WWE by far bar none been there longer competed longer, bigger matches, main events, all this other stuff like that. Um, I agree with you from the standpoint of the, like the talent never seemed to match up, but I also felt like the creative was also kind of weird. I feel like Veer was definitely like a, a Vince McMahon kind of project before he got 
kind of whisk away and then veer kind of never returned from that but i also felt like i don't know part of me i didn't like gender gender is like not a factor for me <laughs> just i didn't like how gender was presented i didn't like how gender talks i don't like how gender wrestles <laughs> i don't like how gender anything um shout out to him for becoming wwe champion i love the representation what that means for indian um you know people but ultimately to me, he was not good. Um, Veer, the, the running thing online was like sexy Veer. Where it's like, this guy's actually handsome. This guy's actually like cool. He actually dresses well. And you guys have him kind of dressed as like, y'all want him to be essentially like the wild Samoans, but Indian. And I was like, what's the hard thing about just making him a regular person who just happens to be Indian? Like, making him a regular wrestler who just happens to be Indian. Um, either, with the, either way, none of their talent really flew off the page. So, I get it. it. I mean, again, I I can't say that, like, they were already not on TV. And, and again, like, it seems like that's been the theme of these releases is, is that these are talent that they – it's just clear to the audience and to them that, like, they just – there was nothing for them, right? Yeah, there was nothing for them. And after but this, if they have, want to find something for you, they will. But they was just like, oh. I mean, you want to talk about not having anything for someone. Zion Quinn got called up almost two years ago to a free agent. Uh, the, the remember the free agent tag? Yeah, yeah. No, that was last year. That was last year. It was last year. Oh my god, that seemed longer than what it was. This is when Triple H first took over, right? With his, with his first draft, or kind of his first draft. I guess Vince was still there, but um. You know, they had free agent tags where people were la- allowed to bounce shows because they were free agents. We saw a couple of those free agents. We never saw Zion Quinn except for a month ago when he was squashed in three seconds by Braun Breaker. Well, what were your thoughts on Zion Quinn from NXT to now? Great look. Like a great Netflix henchman villain look. Um, here's my thing with Zion Quinn. I think given the we're going to talk about someone else on this list. I don't know. It had to be something else because they didn't give him no opportunities for the last year. Like none, like none at all. And I thought that's weird. Like an opportunity to kind of like show yourself, especially if you're still someone relatively new and someone still relatively new to the company who just came out of the developmental system. And you saw enough in him to say like, we should draft him to raw. Um, I think he could have at least been given a chance. Um, that's what I would have said. Granted, he's not great. I feel like the opportunities creatively with stuff they've done in NXT for a long, 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 long time. I feel like he could have gotten an opportunity for, to do more stuff there. Am I bugging? Yes, because he was never really that good in ring. <laughs> I mean, it was like what? He was never good in ring. Remember when Legato? We're gonna talk to- about someone else on this list, and I'm gonna just compare them. <laughs> <laughs> they were never that good. I mean, Zion Quinn was was come on, man. He was never that good. They they gave him like years of squash matches, and like people sat on their hands in the PC where anyone gets over on the PC. If they didn't give him enough of a stupid gimmick. To try, I feel like my thing is I can't even remember the la- that's like what's wild to me. Like I can't even remember the last I, I don't remember the last thing he did, and maybe that's an indication on him. It actually for sure is an indication about him. But also, I feel like somewhere in the last year, year and a half, they could have tried. They could have made him a heavy. They could have made him just someone like something. I don't know. Maybe I'm bugging. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not rocking with the Zion Quinn. <laughs> I'm just, I just want him. I got to look up some YouTube stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his biggest moment was dancing with, uh, what's her name? Uh, what, what's her, what's her name? Uh, I don't know. Um, Indy? Uh, no, the, the girl from Stephanie? the Gotham. Electra. He danced with Oh, Electra. 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 Yeah. Like, oh, like, okay. Yeah. They could have made him a hot boy. Come on, man. Oh man! That, uh, all right, next up, Zaylee. Listen, man, they had no clue what to do with Zaylee, and you know this is of no fault of her own at times. 
I they, like they she had the one of the coolest entrances, and then they just had her out there like like doing like weapons like like weapon uh stuff in the in the in the intro and shit, and then like mm-hmm. she comes out and then like she has like this really cool look when she comes out. They had her doing all that stuff. And then, like, the matches never really, like, took off. And I think the only times I leave really, like, meant a lot. And it's not when she was doing the spooky shit in NXT. It was when she was knocking bitches out. That was cool. Remember when she knocked Becky out? Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Like, but she could have been a killer. Yeah. But they didn't but, want her to be a killer. <laughs> I, I just think that it was, it was like... I just think that with with her and like like another talent that we'll talk about, it's just very tough to break through when there are so many like there's a glut of stars on these shows now, mm-hmm. and it's it's like they they might have over they really honestly might have overhired and overcompensated for that fact with all these people. My thing with Zaylee is also. I also don't feel. I mean, she was given a the Becky thing was pretty good, and I think that's a great utilization of her character. And to be honest with you, if they gave more time to other girls that have different types of feuds, this yeah. would be awesome. Yeah, I think the mere fact the pecking order of WWE kind of got in her way. It's like okay, we can't have someone beating everybody now. Um, we don't want to put her in a tag team, even though I guess she could have been in a tag team. Uh. It's just a lot going on. Like, I thought she had... I don't know about her gimmick coming out as fucking Sasuke from Naruto, but, like... I mean, I could have saw... I, I saw something there. It, it it actually reminds me a lot of what Shinsuke's doing currently. You know? Um, and maybe that could have been some sort of pairing or some sort of stable or some sort of something there not that we pairing all the asians together but apparently i mean i don't know not. what i don't know what shinsuke is doing but it, it he always gets like a one-year push like every year he gets a push yeah so. something like that zia oh zia got her she got her once in a lifetime push at this point yeah um but everyone seems to love her everyone seems to like her everyone says she's a hard worker and she was always there so i'm sure um if she does not end this road i'm sure she will be back she might be able to, she might start wrestling Ash by elegance somewhere. <laughs> uh next up, this one was actually really shocking, but not shocking for me. Uh Von Wagner. They had him come back. They had him lose his comeback match. Then his his manager lost, and he's been off TV for like two, three weeks, right? And I was like, Well, what's the repackage gonna be here? It, Cause it, it seemed like they were gearing up for Robert Stone to turn on him. And I was like, that's stupid like that would be absolutely idiotic for them to actually break them up but there's actually nowhere else for these two to go they've done everything on this brand and if they don't want to call them up i don't know what they're going to do with von wagner like it seemed to me is like in his short time at nxt without winning the title he had been involved with almost every top star there von (laughs) is who i'm referencing to (laughs) In terms of, like, the amount of opportunities someone would get. Even if they're not, like... We we ended up loving Vaughn by sheer absurdity of what he was involved in. Like, that's why we love Braun. Because when Braun came in, it was like, who is this guy? We love Braun because he's like, I love spaghetti. You know, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> like, he was given a lot. And he did a lot. And I think he had a very fruitful NXT career. And I think a lot of other people on this list would have loved to have the NXT career he at least had. Um, But it was clear that they never had... If Vince McMahon was there, Vaughn would probably be on the main roster. They actually hinted at him being on the main roster at some point. Um, But no, he's not... Mm-hmm. They they just don't have main roster plans for him. And essentially, that's like, what can we do with Von Wagner? And I'm sure everyone looked at themselves and looked at each other and looked at Triple H. <laughs> and then... I can't say that... I really can't say that they didn't try. They absolutely tried. 
Yeah, like <laughs> I, I can't. All of these other people, like like gender, I can't say they didn't try. In this year, I could say they probably could have tried a lot more with those two. But this is probably the the top level of they did. They actually did try everything. You had pictures of him as a baby, and all of this shit. I'm like, bro, zippers on his head. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, like he got his was, head. He got killed by Broad on television. Oh, and it was a huge storyline. Like they really tried a lot with him, and um, I I think that it just it just wasn't working out. And he had been there. Remember, you know, we said this a lot on this show. If, if yeah. they say like if you if you've been there two years and you haven't made it up at this point, then they gotta they gotta go elsewhere with it. And um, it, it's just a shame because I actually didn't hate Vaughn. I just didn't know what his long term like. There were so many. There was so much hype about who his father was, and like everyone in the in backstage, like, "Yo, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's gonna be next up." Everyone's like, "He's next up. He's next up." I'm like, "I, I don't know. I don't know." But, um, you know, it, it it just sucks. I actually did enjoy him, especially when he when he turned into like the the uh, kind of like the badass version of himself, and he would just put people through tables. Like that was cool. They made him the table guy, and I was like, "Really? All right." Cool. That was fine. I liked it. It was no, it, was good. it gave him it gave him energy, and people seemed to like. It. People love tables, so yeah, they would love, I guess, Vaughn for wanting to put people through them. I liked um, it. I'm over here watching Zion quit matches. It's a mixed bag. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so sorry that you have to do put yourself to that because you tried to defend this motherfucker, and I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> Top fifteen moves of Zion Quinn. <laughs> Talk to Cyrus and Quan about Zion Quinn, and they'll and they will legitimately like attempt to strangle you through like, like electronically for trying to say this. <laughs> I'm not trying to defend him, but I feel like they could have been more. No, he he don't got no personality. He just fine. I think that's really what you're looking at. He should do it. He should honestly just go in the challenge because. I mean, maybe. He, that he, I was just telling my wife like WWE should have like should go on the challenge like just let some of the people go like like have a, like a month off and they should go on the challenge. Get the the Casey Catanzaro girl. She could go on the challenge. Casey Grayson Waller, uh, a lot, bro. Uh, there's a lot of people that that could that could do this. Yeah, Zion Quinn was tagging with the guy from um, fuck it, uh. The guy who's now in OTM. That's crazy. Look yeah. at all this history that we're fucking uncovering now. And OTM made it further because oh, he said, you know what? I got a personality and somebody that I really am outside of this. And Zion Quinn does it. He probably <laughs> fuck with him. He's got to have like, he's got to be an asshole or a jerk right, or something. Yeah, I know, Maybe. So, La- lastly, as of right now, because. These are rolling. Yeah, these are these seem to be rolling from day by day. Uh, Cameron Grimes was, was announced that he was released this morning, and um, this one hurts because this is one that I felt like they should have done more, and they should have really tried to get this guy over. I mean, he was a huge deal in NXT. He came to SmackDown. There was a lot of I was so excited when he got to SmackDown, and I think it was just bad timing. I think it was bad timing because it was right in the middle of when the Bloodline stuff was really picking up. At right. the end of the year. Right. Um, and I, I think that when I say that they should have tried, I think that like if you saw that he was floundering and that he could have actually done something, you know, worthy, why didn't you just move him to Raw? Why didn't you just put him on Raw? There was a there was a chance to just put Cameron Grimes on Raw. It doesn't even matter. You just break the rules. Just just it could have been during the Jey Uso trade or something like that. Like you could have just put him on Raw where he would have had more runway to show what he could do. I think that it's this is probably the worst of the releases because I think that he has the potential to go somewhere and actually be a huge star that he could have been in this company. And he's charismatic, he can wrestle, he's yeah. uh great with the fans. He's like this is actually, I think, a blunder by WWE to release him. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think this is this is a mistake. Like I I think that he's he's a guy that was just not only just a really seemed like a really good guy, really cool guy, but Anytime he was even on SmackDown, there's few times he was on the fucking show. He made a he made it a point to uh you know to to make a make an impact. And it's just such a it's just such a shame that it just it didn't work out. Um and and it, and I, I think that ultimately like when you look at something like this, you 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 wish for you know some of your favorites or or your favorites to to get a, a really good opportunity. And I don't feel like he was given that opportunity. Like Tagging with Dragon Lee is not it. Jobbing to Austin Theory and Grayson Waller back to back is not it. Like it, none of that shit was cool. Like none of that shit was dope to me. And 
you know, I, I thought just, he was going to be the rich guy on the show. Yeah. And it just made sense. I mean, yeah. he was, he, oh, we were like, oh, okay. He's going to get called up and probably feud with happy Corbin and mad cat Moss. Mm-hmm. Like some, something along those lines, like the fact that none of this happened and like really nothing happened. Nothing. And happened. it's, a. Uh, it's it's just he got called up. It was bad timing on the show, but also I feel like there's no excuse to release him. Yeah, like, someone who could offer and provide so much quality, um, like quality and inter- like entertainment and matches and moments for your company. Like I just think he just never got a chance to do that. There were so many matchups that I wanted to see him do, and all of those guys were busy. <laughs> you know what I mean? In, I think it was also because he was in that first breakout, like literally WWE's first, like the one with Mello. Was, no, it was before that one. Oh, was it? He was in the one with um old boy who got released because they made the racist shirt. Oh, uh, Jordan, Jordan. Miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He yeah. was in that one. Yeah. And that's like in 2019, maybe even 2020, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but he'd been around for a while, and I think WWE's looking at him like, what can we do with him? What can we really contribute with him? Um, and is there anything we can do now? And they're probably like, not really. It's kind of sad. It kind of sucks. I do think there's plenty of potential with him, and I think there's a lot you can do. And it clearly, from fan response, they genuinely liked him. Um, whether he was there or not, I'm sure after a couple of weeks he would have won. If they had continued, I don't know. There's a, it's just a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I and again, it go like him. His release is goes along with the theme of what I said earlier. It was like these are guys that weren't doing much on TV, and it just seemed like they didn't have anything for them. Um, so it, it, it you know, can't you know, Cam goes into that, but. I think they could have done something with him. And I think that's the the big, the big tragedy here. I think that he's a big pickup for any company that picks him up, AEW, Impact, anybody who picks him up. They'll, they'll have somebody that can, that can give them some quality, quality entertainment, some quality matches and, and, and a quality character. Um, so yeah, that, those were the releases. That's the bummer news um, to start the show. Do you think there's going to be more? Yeah, at this point, yeah. Six releases would be nuts. I'm like, oh damn, company's doing awesome. Yeah. Uh, um, speaking of awesome, I mean, speaking of of, of these re- releases, you're you're you've been watching a show about people who are potentially you going said to be speaking of too. awesome as if <laughs> the show I, I watched. Said, speaking of releases, I, th- I thought. Oh. I said, releases. I, th- I think I said speaking. You of said releases. awesome. No, you said speaking of awesome. I don't say what. Oh, <laughs> well, whoops. Speaking uh, of releases, for sure. Um, I watched. The w- I call it personally the WWE Roku show. Mm-hmm. Um, you absolutely, you absolutely and, did in my tattoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, to me, it's still that. And I think other th- there might be another WWE show on Roku, but it's really the only... Roku's interesting, the Roku channel. Like, to be honest with you, I didn't even need a password or a login to watch this entire show. <laughs> 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 I literally went on the website. It was there. They've got other shows. They've got, like, Home Improvement fucking um what else they got here good lord a bunch of other shows that are not as good um but they got a lot of stuff on here uncle buck oh my god um but with that said i watched it my review is the first five episodes could have been one episode off rip (laughs) how long these are like hour long these are essentially they're like 45 minutes to an hour long episodes Okay. The first five episodes where there it's all the same tryout at the one weekend. Yeah. <laughs> where they follow people that are not making the show. <laughs> that could have been one episode. And it has been on Tough Enough. After you get past that point, the show, once you get to the actual six characters that you're following, the show gets actually, well, not six. It's like maybe eight. The eight characters that you're following that they offer contracts to. Then it gets pretty good, but then it ends in like two episodes after. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that said, they picked a good group, man. Like HBK, he knows what he's doing. Like 
in just in general, they know what they're doing. They they when they recorded so after we reach that cutoff point and we get there, first of all, they have the little fight thing. Um which is funny. It's two dudes from the same school, kind of egos get in the way of stuff because they're being a little bit competitive in the ring and getting a little bit rough in the ring and they're like, yo, what the fuck, bro? Um and then Matt Bloom immediately reprimands them for fighting back. It's like, bro, Tony Khan, you're an idiot. But Matt Bloom immediately reprimands them, sends them home, makes them come back, and essentially says, do you guys want to give up this opportunity that you have in the business? They say no. They make up. We're back on the track. Um, the other girl, there's a, there's a, it's showing me all types of things. The Italian guy, um, his visa didn't come in. So he's unable to participate in the actual training. He got picked, but he's unable to participate because his visa is not coming in. He they he can't even walk in the building to 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 go to work kind of vibe. Like he can't be working because he doesn't have his visa. So he's just not in the second part of the show. Um he shows up in the last episode to like cheer for the people who are wrestling. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. Um sorry if I'm spoiling the show for you, but honestly. What is the what well I'm not gonna watch it. What what yeah, is the, I wouldn't go out my way to watch it. <laughs> what's the vibe um of the show? Like is it produced well? It is very clean. If you're going back to how t- it's like tough enough, but not on MTV. Right. This is like tough enough on maybe like CMT. <laughs> <laughs> Like this is not. There's no. There's no really drama. There's no like. Man, she's been looking really hot. Like CMT you know, is crazy. <laughs> there's no nothing there. It's literally them going to work and <laughs> doing really good at their jobs. <laughs> like they're inc- they nail. Essentially, they've impressed everyone. Literally in the first ten weeks of them there, they said that this was the fastest learning class that they've ever had. Like, and I believe them because they looked good. They're doing bumps and flips and all the. I mean, essentially, they have rehearsed the match. Like, they're doing all the basics. They're not really going out the realm. No one's doing 450s. No one's doing backflips. No one's doing any of that stuff. They're literally doing wrist locks and scoop slams and all the other shit like that. Um, but it seems to get it down really, really well. It's cool to see the backstages of and how WWE what they consider actual talent, what they consider all these other things. Like, that's what it's cool to see. Um, but as a show itself, it is not. It's good background TV, but not, like, good. Like, oh, I'd watch this every week. No, it's actually not. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you uh, you did that so I didn't have to do it. Hey, I, I, did, I did note that they signed one of these white guys that I think looks extremely annoying. Um uh, I think it's called Sexy BJ. Yeah, yeah, Sexy BJ looks incredibly annoying. Um, on on his evaluation, Shawn Michaels called him a dipshit. But also, Shawn Michaels has a like he has a sweet spot for him because he was also a dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like he's talented as hell, but you know, don't be a dipshit off camera. You could be a dipshit on camera, but you can't be a dipshit off camera. And I'm like, oh brother, I knew this was gonna happen. Um, I think the thing with NXT is that I feel like, um, uh, like they hire a kid who looks like Brie Bosa. <laughs> Brie Bosa. But I I think the Sean it's breeds a bunch. He breeds a bunch of hymns in NXT. Am I am I wrong to say that? Like he he breeds a bunch of people that act exactly like he does. If he see if he sees a, a part of his career that went through this, like there's another kid, the the kid that looks like Brie Bosa, he's like he's quiet and respectful. He was like, I was once quiet and respectful <laughs> <laughs> when I started. Um, and then to be honest with you, again, the most impressive wrestlers there were the girls. <laughs> they got it down really, really well, and their matches look really, really good. Um, the end of it was the final episode was we're going to pick two of you to have a match for in front of a live NXT audience. And it was like the pre-show to NXT heat wave last year, I guess. Um, and they picked a straight cut guy and the guy was like, he's fine. He was like, he's good, but he's very like vanilla to me. And then they picked the girl, um, the black girl whose mom disapproved of her. She didn't tell her mom because she thought her mom would be a hater. And then when she did tell her mom she got signed to WWE, her mom was definitely a hater. <laughs> um, her mom was like, um, she's one of those people who were just like, oh, the um, 
she thinks the closer you are to entertainment is the closer you are to sin. <laughs> but then mom gets there when she has her match and she's losing her mind. <laughs> yeah, she'll fit she'll fit right in in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is she in one of those uh is she in any of the TikTok videos with the other girls? It's gonna be interesting, but no, I mean it's a it's a good background show. It's yeah. it's good to see how they make WWE superstars. It's clearly this shit is a factory at this point. A talent factory. Just given and then you give your good talent away to, to fucking other companies. I'm so mad about this Cameron Grime thing. Uh AEW Dynasty happened on Sunday. Um hey. Greatest fucking wrestling event that ever existed. Greatest wrestling show ever. Uh, don't it don't matter about the TV. The TV can suck all day <laughs> as long as they keep doing this because it's the greatest wrestling show ever. WrestleMania forty. Who? Bruh. Cody. What? <laughs> you know who finished the story? Swerve Strickland. <laughs> yeah, bruh. He finished the story. How dare you? He did it for us. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Woo. Wait, did you did you watch the we gotta we gotta do the well first of all? Mm-hmm. Swerve wins the AEW World Championship. Go for him. <sighs> to me, this is like this is something I'd expect in NXT. But, like, not in an actual full-blown company where shit is actually, like, on the line and there's actual stakes. Because I don't think his career and his narrative was ready to win the AEW World Championship yet. And, Mm -hmm. in fact, I think he's going to come out on the worst side. People are going to start complaining and groaning and moaning when his championship reign isn't as fucking flashy and fire as it is. Um but he won the AEW World Championship. He beat Samoa Joe. Who has not beaten Samoa Joe at this point for a championship? I think I beat Samoa Joe for a championship. Hey, man, times. listen, a lot, of, a lot of times, but shout out to them. Um, the greatest wrestling match that ever existed, though, in happened America. on this show. In, in the U.S. In America, ever. Because if it didn't happen in the Tokyo Dome, did it really happen? Um Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay. People wanted to love this match. And don't get me wrong. It's a great match. I think it's it's in the running for match of the year for me. I agree. Um, it is a great match. It's a great match. But I think that, like, we get it, y'all. <laughs> we get it. So, Meltzer and Alvarez said that this was the greatest match that ever happened on U.S.-based soil. So we put out a tweet on the A Show Twitter. Shout out to the A Show RNC on Twitter. Make sure you guys follow. It said, name a U.S.-based wrestling match better than Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson at AEW Dynasty, and we'll determine if it's better on this week's show. And, sir, there were a lot of matches that people put up here. We're going to go through a couple of these, and we're going to determine. Yes, we have some special guests to chime in, too. Shout out to a few from... uh... Botchamania, even. Hey, man, listen. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, Hold on, before we do that, what do you think about the pay per view in general? For real, for for realsies. <laughs> um. Good lord, what happened on the first half? I don't remember anything that happened before the greatest match ever. <laughs> um. Uh, the 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 Jay White finally fulfilled his destiny on the pre show. <laughs> hey, man. Guns up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, if there was able to have like a, a trade for like talent, they the, I, I would accept the Jay White for for um, Cam Grimes trade. I would mm-hmm. accept that they're both in the same spots, I pretty agree. much. I think so, relative relative to what Cam was doing is relative in the AEW and equal to what Jay White's doing, which is nothing. Ultimately, I'll go through this card very very quickly. Mm-hmm. Okada versus Pac was good, but I don't really. I don't remember, remember it. about it. I don't remember shit um, about. It. House of Black versus Adam Copeland was good because of the end. House of Black win. Where does this lead for Malachi Black and Adam Copeland? Hopefully a singles match because that actually makes sense. Um, it probably lead to him turning heel because that seems to be the next Oh, step. that's true. Yes, that's the Black mm-hmm. Mist. The lore of the Black Mist is that. Mm-hmm. So Adam Copeland, he's going to repurpose that fucking Judgment Day suit. I'm telling you. 
Um, oh, of course he is, because he's because you know what? I don't think that it wasn't his idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought that it wasn't his idea, and no matter how much he tells us this, he's one of the greatest liars and grifters of all time. Oh, come on, man! Don't do that to Adam Copeland. It's my guy still, kind of. Yeah. Um, okay. well, Willow, Night- Willow Nightingale <laughs> defeated Julia Hart. One of these strange. Can I talk? Can I go to my soapbox about this? Yeah, it was six minutes, by the way. <laughs> It was basically a reverse squash, okay? There, okay. from the moment that it started, there's been rumors that Julia Hart's injured, I, I believe, that coming into this, she w- that she was hurt. Okay. So, in the beginning of this match, Willow, who is at least, if not double the size of, her, of, of Julia Hart, but definitely bigger than her, yes, was bumping around like a fool for Julia Hart who, from what I understand, does she have like mystical powers that have not been explained to me on this TV show? Julia Hart does have mystical powers. Yes. Like of strength? Of superhuman strength? Oh no, not of superhuman strength. <laughs> like I understand she can d- appear and disappear, but she wasn't doing none of that. So like no. <laughs> there was like, I, I think that in, in situations like this, like it's either you have Willow just beat her in three minutes, but don't go through and like try, like like Julia didn't need to be, need, didn't need to look strong because Willow still needs to look strong for Mercedes. That, that's ultimately my issue. So you had Willow get beat up for five minutes, five, five minutes and 20 seconds. She was getting beat up. She was getting tossed over the announce table. She was getting fucking. <laughs> she beat. was getting tossed over the announce table. Oh, she was getting beat the fuck up the whole match. I'm like, what am I watching? Like it was, it, the, the psychology was just all off. And, and I would say that it was the same for the, the Tony Storm match, which I thought was better than this, but still was just confusing in the way that it was set up and developed because Willow should, Willow to me should just kind of be like Vader, right? Like she should just be like beating these, beating these chicks up. And Julia was taking it to where there was, there, she wasn't working the arm, wasn't working the leg, the knee, nothing. She just beating the shit out of her. And then out of nowhere, um, Willow, Counters the uh counters the the moon salt, which looked terrible. Um, hit her with a lariat, hit her with power bomb is over. And I was like, so what was the what the house rules were that nobody was supposed to be there, but it was like that didn't that wouldn't have mattered anyway. Yeah, it didn't really seem to matter at all. Um, and then Mercedes comes out in a prom dress and <laughs> starts dancing and grinding her way to the ring and said, Look at me, double or nothing. Um they asked Tony Khan at the press scrum afterwards because they ask if Mercedes is cleared to wrestle to which he said she will be cleared to wrestle at double or nothing (laughs) signed her and she wasn't cleared that's that's all I heard that's all I heard you signed her when she was injured is all I heard highest highest paid woman man listen it's not easy to get one over on this guy (laughs) no um, I, I I didn't like this match at all. I thought it was a weak way to give her the title. It wasn't. It didn't even feel like a moment when it happened because no. Mercedes immediately came out and kind of poured water all over. You could have just had her in the back. Just I would have had her get involved in the match. Like, I mean, granted, I guess she's not cleared, <laughs> but she still, I w- could have, she still could have been involved because she still could have just been like doing. Oh God, you don't want to do commentary again. I don't know. No, Here's no, the- I wouldn't have got in. I wouldn't have done commentary. There would have been a ref bump. Um. Sky Blue would have came out. Um, Mercedes would have eventually came out to kind of like even the odds. Maybe they do a false finish where she accidentally <laughs> hits Willow or something, but Willow kind of bounces back afterwards. She still kicks out of whatever it is afterwards, and then she wins the match. And it's like, one, you show that she can take what Mercedes can bring to her, but also she's a like strong champion in that fact that she can overcome all of this. And then also you show that like, not run like, like she could run the ring and like grab sky blue's legs and like take her off the to the the apron or something like that like yeah like, something like that it's either you do that or like i said earlier have her be and i'm sorry i'm harping on this so much but i just feel like this is like indicative of every of the problems that i have with this company sometimes it's like a simple thing that's just yeah. like so fucking it's so hard for them to get like why did julia need to look at this? L- listen it is it, she is no longer the focus of this title anymore they, they've gotten everything out of it have her get beat. It's not going to hurt her. She's still in a in a in, in a stable where she can, you know, they have, you know, smoking mirrors, and she didn't have help anyway. You could still, it, but it proves that Willow is who she says she is, and now she's going to go on to double or nothing and get beat. I mean, she looked weak in this match. She's going to look weaker in that match. So it is what it is. Um, um strong, versus strong Riley. yeah, strong versus Riley. Yeah, I don't know. great. I watch great gowns. Um, 
uh, Jerk on Hook, I ain't watched that shit either. I saw the end, and I and I mean, he's Hook. telling a story. He's telling a story. Hook, hey buddy, why it do Chris Jericho be. need to win the FTW championship? <laughs> Just think it, it, it so his Wikipedia would look cool. This is um, he won the ROH championship last year too. <laughs> <laughs> like, why did he need to win this? Um, Tony Storm versus uh, Thunder Rosa. I think the the result was never in doubt but this one also had an issue with because um Thunder Rosa just stopped selling the back she just stopped selling the back and then loses to a power driver hey man like I don't know what we're heading to with Tony Storm <laughs> but apparently it's not Mercedes it's, it's Britt Baker for sure it's Britt Baker okay double or nothing must be the, like their fucking room. is that like their it's not their Wrestlemania but it, it's gotta be like their it's like SummerSlam yeah, gotta be. Um, um, Osprey and Danielson. Listen, I like this match a lot. Yes, I won't go five on it. Okay. I think that both guys. I think Dom made this point, and I agree. Both guys to me had better matches with Kenny Omega. Mm. Both of them did. Both I, of them did. I well, think. How did, how did you feel about the final spot? I didn't like it. And if Apparently. Brian got legit hurt on that spot, which it looks like, I feel like he did because his his shoulder was definitely out of the socket. Unless he could just make it pop out at will. Apparently, they they're hinting that it's a work. Okay, well, it's still stupid <laughs> because you keep doing it. Yeah, you, <laughs> it's, can't, you can't keep faking this man's near death experience all over. Yeah, <laughs> like, even if it's a even if it's a shoot or if it's shoot, it's stupid. If it's a work, it's stupid. So what what point? What dunk is there? <laughs> for that like it's it's stupid i thought it was oh. good um or i'm sorry i thought it was great i didn't think it was perfect i thought i i i think that what what gets me about it is that they're other than the fact that these two are the the greatest of all time of the past decade and the other guy could be the greatest of all time of this decade it's not a good enough story for me because there's i mean with, with will and kenny it was like i'm the you know there was that, you know, the back and forth between those two. And then with Kenny and Brian, it was like first time ever. Like, you know, I feel like this was in the same sense, kind of what that Kenny and Brian match was, but to a lesser extent, because Kenny had that resume going in. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about most stars. I'm talking about everything that he did going into it that I feel like Osprey did after, but was never really as big as it, what it, what it was for Kenny in 2016. You know what I'm saying? I and I think, I think that like what they did here was great. And it was, it, but I would be real. I feel like this was a match that, that Osprey could have lost. I think he, I think he should have lost this match. Hmm. Interesting. Why do you say so? So they could do this again. Oh, and you have true. a better match. You could, you could, you could have had him lose here, because the story right now, uh, Mills, and I hate to be getting into like two AEW coded. This is very uh, war report. So I'm sorry, guys. But the key here, right? And then shit, Cyrus Quan. Let me know if this is, you know, if this makes sense. But the key here is that you're trying to keep the title off of Osprey until August. He can't just keep winning because you're not going to have a, it's not going to make sense. Have this yeah. be the one loss that he has, the one demon that he has that makes him doubt himself and then have him build it back up to all in and then have Brian win the title and then do it for the title in, um, in Wembley. And then if you want to get that horny about it, the week, the week after you can say Okada versus Osprey at, at, um, the other all show they do all out, out. yeah yeah that's a that's a two that's a that's a that's a one two punch that i think everyone would tune in for that's a one plus one equals two that's that's some cm punk collision booking not this yeah fucking, whatever the fuck they're booking here anyway um, uh ladder match i didn't watch that shit um good 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 for uh good for jack perry how is this guy who got beat up getting cheered is that is that like the is that the type of personality that the AEW fans breed? Is that you get beat up and you, you're cooler for that? They like when people show up surprised. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is clearly they like when they don't know what's going to happen, or even the or they know what's going to happen and it happens. Then they feel smarter for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't watch it. I didn't. Re- I literally didn't watch anything after the Brian and Osprey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm turning my back. To I would have, I would have, I would have left if I was at that show immediately after that match. I'm like, all right, we good. I'm turning my um, back. Or shit. I think it says a lot of. It says a lot that there's a lot of black people that's not fucking with it. 
and I look at the people who are black and fucking with it. But let me just be clear for people who don't know. Swerve disrespected some people that I respect. And I don't like regardless of if these people, you know, are like cool with it or whatever. Like, I don't I don't bang with that because of the way he did it in the public way he did it. And this is videos that you can actually go back and go see. I think they you, you these people spent their time to create something very cool for the black community within the wrestling industry. We don't have a lot of representation. We don't have a lot of eyes on our stuff. And he went on there and shit on it. Um, then, he, then he doubled down on it. And then he never apologized for it. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary on if you care about the verse that he put out or the line that he put out in that Instagram story, whatever, whatever that happened to about black women. There's, if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck. He is what he is. He's a fuck nigga. And I'll never support him. And that's just what it is. It's always going to be, it's always going to be smoke. I will say, I'm, I guess I'm disappointed definitely in him. I'm disappointed in the people who also, have used this opportunity for under, not understanding why people wouldn't support him, especially the people, especially black wrestling who are involved of why they wouldn't support him. And then calling them corny and fucking clout chasers and all this other stuff like that. I'm more disappointed in that, especially if you know, like these people have done more work than, like I said, the 10,000 hours that we've done in spades and whether people get invited to scrums or, or have great Twitter accounts with all their engagement about all fire matches and stuff like that. These are people who like us are actually doing the work and uplifting the community and building a community and not just typing stuff to make it seem cool. So I'm disappointed in pretty much Swerve one. He hasn't apologized. He hasn't anything. He hasn't done anything. Um, and then all the other people, not necessarily people who support him. Cause I don't really, if you support him, that's on you. That's, cool is whatever it is what it is but the people who shit on um the stuff that people who are actually trying to uplift the community are actually doing and try to write it off so um i still want to do this exercise because we did tweet it out let's do it name us base match better than will osprey brian danielson at AEW dynasty shout out to ugly new york rob he says kenny omega versus brian danielson <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i i, I, I would take that one I'll take that one. I think it's better. You can say let's, we'll do better or better or worse. Okay. We'll we'll do a quick speed round because we're going along on the free show. Um, Jeff J. AJ Styles versus John Cena, Royal Rumble. Oh. <clears throat> mm. Did I get that one a five? Did we get that one a five? I think we gave it a five. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm not giving this one a five, then yeah, it's, it's better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cyrus says Takashi, Takeshi Morishima versus Brian Davis. <laughs> yes. Um, Matthew Gregg from Forever Botchamania says El Torito versus Hornswoggle. <laughs> WLC. Yes. Better. Dwayne Nix says Taker versus HBK at WrestleMania 25 and 26. And Bret Hart versus Stone Cold. Red Hart versus Stone Cold, yes. The other two, no. Ooh, okay. Um, Botchasaurus says, <laughs> Brett versus Piper, WrestleMania 8. Brett versus I haven't seen that one in a while. But I remember how fluid it is. It's actually a completely different match. I'm not sure if I can compare it. Yeah, nah. Um, I won't say no. I'll say no. I'm going to say no. Um, Clone Kid says, Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero, Halloween Havoc, 97. I think yes, yes, is, yeah. that's better. It's also more also, culturally significant. <laughs> also, didn't have a story. They didn't have a story, but it was it was it was just a, a, a better match. Yeah. Um, Joe Mantana's right arm says any of the Flair Steamboat trilogy, including Wrestle War. <laughs> so <don't>, easy. Yeah, <laughs> that's just such an easy thing to compare. I'm gonna go. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. Here's my thing, okay, with the this Flair Steamboat shit, right? Not my era, bro. I'm yeah, gonna just be real. So I'm gonna say no. I've seen I've seen some of it, but like also, yeah, it's not my era. But it's great. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna choose one from this. John D says Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole, two out of three falls, NXT championship, NXT takeover New York. Absolutely not. No, that was <laughs> kick out fucking a mania. Yeah. Um yeah. Os- Osprey versus Omega forbidden door last year. <sighs> Not a forbidden door. If you would have said Wrestle Kingdom, I would have said yes. 
Uh, but I'll say no here. No, it's not better. DMV says Fatal Four Way Universal Championship at SummerSlam: Roman, Brock, Braun, Joe. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Sorry. Um, Monty Diavanzo says Samoa Joe versus CM Punk three in ROH. That's the one that's not a time limit draw. I thought the time limit draw was one of my favorite matches of all time. Yeah. This one had an ending. Um, I'll say no. <laughs> I'll say no, but I really love that match. Double foot Sam says Kevin Steen versus El Generico fight without honor. Yes. Um, yes, it's better. It's, yeah, it's better. Story, bro. It's the story of that. Wait, you know what I'm yes, this match is better than that one. It's better than that. Yeah, it's better than uh, Osprey Danielson. Okay. Same. Uh, <laughs> The vape end says Zane versus Knoxville at WrestleMania 38. <laughs> no, come on, man. <laughs> and Daniel Salgado, shout out to my guy, says John Cena versus CM Punk, Money in the Bank 2011. I'm actually gonna say no. I think I think this match was better than that one. But it's oh. a lot. There's a there's a there's a big environment involved, which I get. But their raw match was better. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um... MJF versus Brian Danielson, 60 minute Iron Man match by Clint. What do you say? I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I'll say no too. <laughs> All right, I gotta hold on. We got a couple more. We actually got a lot of responses from that. Kaz says Brett versus um Austin. We've already went through that. That's like the standard. Like it just is what yeah. it is. It's the greatest yeah. match. <laughs> Flo says the greatest wrestling match ever, Edge versus Randy or in at Backlash 2020. No. <laughs> um, the Flare S says, shout to Tony Childs, um, says Seth versus Brock versus Cena, World Rumble 2015. Great match, but no. Um, Dom, had, Dom didn't name a match, but he's got photos. But he definitely says Ricky Steamboat versus Austin, and I'm thinking this is that. I don't WCW. know these WCW pay-per-views. Yeah, I remember that one. No. Um, wow, Black Eye Wrestling Pod said Hart versus Austin at Survivor Series 1996. I was saying no, but it's a pretty no. good match. It's a great match, yeah. Ooh, wait, hold on. This is a nice one. Dave uses this. Shout out to Dave. It says Stone Cold versus Kurt Angle at SummerSlam 2001. Sleeper. 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 The, the end of the match was some bullshit, though. <laughs> yeah. Sleeper, though. I'm going to say no. But it definitely deserves more love. I mean, it definitely deserves more love. I'm gonna end this with Kenny Brophy, our guy. He says both Roman, Roman both Roman ver- both Roman versus Cody's. Uh, uh, the thing about Roman and Cody is that you have to look at those matches in totality as a story, mm-hmm. so which which kind of hinders it a bit. Um, I'm of the I'm of the fashion that. The second match is my favorite match of the year right now. So yes, I'm going to say it's better. Right. Um, but let's see how it ages. I, I think that like there is not like people, I I feel like people are manufacturing what type of feeling that gives you. And it's, there's nothing wrong with having that feeling twice in one year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like I think that my feeling for that match is the culmination. My feeling for this match is like these are two wrestlers that are just going out to wrestle. And I'm like, that's cool. That's cool for me, but that's not exactly what I look for um in my wrestling all the time so I'm, i'll say the second one yes but the first one is very tough to judge because we have the ending and the totality of that story like i feel like part one for roman and cody is like half of the story so so we're running along on the free show yes we are so the wwe draft thing here's what i want to do mm-hmm. we'll give two picks and maybe we'll continue it on the Patreon. I hate to be that person, but this is what we do. Um, what I would like to do is, because I think the draft is more so, it's less about who's going to be on, because I, most people are going to get drafted to the same fucking show. Um, I want you to name two people, two people who should move shows, and then one person who you think should be from NXT, and we may continue the conversation on the Patreon. Two people who should move shows. Um, Gunther should move to SmackDown. Ooh, okay. Why do you say that? Um, he's done everything on Raw. He beat everyone on SmackDown too. <laughs> Low key. 
Well, no, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, it's gonna get shit. It's, oh, I mean, that's true. It's it's a different. He's not intercontinental champion anymore. Yeah, he and I mean, he can face everybody now. Um, and also, it's it's it, it's Cody World on SmackDown. I think it's time for him to be in that world. Uh, mm-hmm. and I think that. I think that pick, pick a woman. Pick a woman. Yeah. Um, should Nia Jax should go to NXT. Nia Jax should go to NXT. <laughs> Whoa. Why, Why did what makes you say that? She gets a she gets a shot at that title. Uh, Ooh, they, that's they, true. There's a beast that everyone will have to defeat Amen. on that show. Listen, she got she got dance part on SmackDown. She won't go to SmackDown. You know what I'm saying? It, it it could happen, but I think Nia Jax on NXT is really exciting to me. I, I think that uh, again, Ooh, like, you have a lot of women there, and you have no big women there. And I like like other than like the the, the what immediately pops out to me, and I don't mean like I mean like big and like stature, like like tall, super tall women. But like, I, like the the thing that pops out to me is giving Lash Legend somebody that she can actually get a huge marquee win against. Mm. Lash versus Nia to me is something that like going forward is. is would be really dope to see. Oh, okay. I see it. I see your Ban Corbin vibe. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pick if I had to move someone. I think. Oof. Good lord. Um. Move. I'm gonna regret that. No. Do I want to do this? I'm. I'm Odie. Gonna regret this. Move Bobby Lashley and his group to Raw. <laughs> Just SmackDown. Uh, There's no time to develop. There's no time to do anything. The bloodline is on SmackDown. You're not ever beating the bloodline. <laughs> You're not even getting close to the bloodline. <laughs> Move him to Raw. Have him do or recapture whatever feeling is on Raw. I include street here's pros. what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Well, we'll talk about it on the Patreon. I'm because I'm going to show you why this is flawed. But uh, <laughs> thank you guys for listening. Hold on, hold on. I got, I got a woman. I got a woman. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I would move. I low key want to move Bianca back to Raw. I think. I'm gonna go. Yeah, let's move Bianca to Raw. Well, I mean, it makes sense with your previous, uh, yeah, the previous move of the Pride to. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> I guess yeah. Black people to Raw. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's no black people on Raw. Um, <laughs> if you had a big, if you had to draft someone from NXT to call up to the main roster, who would it be? Easy, uh, Ilya Dragunov. I mean, all right, he's definitely pick someone who isn't as an already announced that he's moving up. Um, who hasn't announced it right now? Yeah, who you'd be like? Okay, I can see them on the main roster. Uh, who hasn't announced it? Honestly, Chase you. Chase you. Yeah, it's time to get. Honestly, it's time to either chase or get off the pot at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just time. It's time for it. They gotta. They gotta go. It's Do you feel like they? Because they're at a definitely a crossroads where they could either be like, we don't have anything from on the main roster, it's time to go, or do you feel like Chase you should definitely be on a main roster kind of thing? Um, I I, I think it's time to sink or swim. I I think that like they they are good characters. The the gimmick has subsided. There's so many chances. They had so many chances, meals to break up this team and break up this gimmick, and they never did it. So like, if that's the case, just let them see if it works on the big, you know, the big the big time. Um, I I think it could work. I, I think Andre Trace is, is is a serviceable worker that that does really well in like kind of big match environments, like where they're about to win or where it's like a the multi man tag team the tag matches that they do and stuff like that. He's proven that he can do that. But they're just a great mid card act, and I think that in the in the sense or in the in the possibility that we may not have the Alpha Academy anymore, then that would they could just slide right into that position. Okay, I see it. Um. If I had to pick someone from NXT to move up, I'm going to go. Oof, there's a lot of there's a lot here. I miss Wendy Chu. Um, is she? I have no idea. But the the, the knee injury should only be a year, right? It, she it must be complications. If, if if it goes longer than what it's supposed to, I'm assuming it's complications. Um, 
I don't want to waste this on a whack one. <laughs> okay, so literally, literally, back in um, it might have to be Blair Davenport to be honest with you. It's time. Mm-hmm. It's time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but Sean said almost a year ago, Meals, June thirtieth, or not, or, or not June thirtieth. It was like June. It was like when when was it? Why why is that? This is a terrible website. Um, July twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. Uh, her the, her injury her her return is still a ways off. This is almost a year ago. That's a bad. That's. Let me see what she what she doing on the gram. How about that? She's been off TV since she's been off TV since March twenty twenty three, and then the 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 injury was said as not too serious, according to Alvarez. Let me see what she's doing on the gram. I'm concerned. I'm concerned too. Yeah, she she hasn't posted in ten weeks. She looks like she's having a great time on the gram. It looks like Robert Stone's a producer now, also. They love that guy. <laughs> there's, you know there's, what? You know what? No Good. For, yeah, and there's no plans for a creator for him following Von Wagner's release. So he just uh he's I guess he just soft uh soft launched off the timeline here. You know what? Good. Because I didn't get it, but they did. So shout out to them. Um, okay, that's gonna be it for the free show. We'll see you guys on the other side for patrons. And next week, we'll be doing a a, 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 a prediction show. Backlash. Yeah, it's backlash. A, for backlash. So um, tune in to us then, and we'll see you guys next week on the A Show. For Meals, I'm Justin. See you next week. Peace.